Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the party. Tonight we will be playing On Prosperous Winds, a D&D 5.0 adventure using a homebrew world of exploration and mystery. And I'm Ren, the DM for this adventure. And our captions are loading. Please pardon the yellow boxes. Uh, the role of Dino Diner will be played by this uh, hand-drawn grid map of prosperity that I have uh, just shoved into here. But you will be hearing Dino's wonderful voice and hopefully seeing the captions as, as we... Uh, play along this evening. Uh, before we jump back into reintroducing all of our wonderful players and uh, figuring out how our accidental lighthouse rescue mission crew is going to handle this crew of pirates that has come to attack them, uh, we're going to shout out our sponsors of Welcome to the Party. Uh, so, first and foremost, Tabletop Loot is our dice provider of choice. Head on over to www.tabletoploot.com and use the code WTTPDICE to get 15% off of your next purchase. So Nerdware is welcome to the party's merch purveyor of choice. Head over to www.sonerdware.com and use the code WELCOME at checkout to get 10% off of your next purchase. So Nerdware, it's what the nerds wear. Welcome to the party sponsored by Roll20. How you're hearing this great music. It's an awesome in-browser virtual tabletop. We're using Roll20 for all of our dice rolls, and as I just said, the music playing in this game. I forgot that I already wrote that in there. Uh, Roll20 is free to join, uh, so you can sign up now at roll20.net slash start slash WTTP. This channel is, is also sponsored by the Immaculate Devon Rue, the cartographer extraordinaire. Head over to ruinc.com to see some of the best TTRPG maps in town. And finally, Welcome to the Party has fantastic patrons who help support our mission to uplift marginalized voices in the TTRPG land. I'm a proud patron myself, as you will see on our little break screen, uh, which is new and shiny this week. And you could be too. And there's a cat. We're also sponsored by How Much We All Love Animals. No, we're not Zoe. sponsored by that. But, you know. My baby. She says, please be a patron. We'll really love it. <laughs> Oh, she's so cute sounding. Oh my gosh. Um, and after the show's over, head over to our Discord. It's one of the more active Discords I'm in, and the channel has, or the server has channels for just about anything you'd want to talk about. And woo, hello, thank you. Um, I forgot how loud that was. Uh, what was I saying? Discord. Yes. Um, and it has channels for all of our games, and there's a channel for this game if you want to talk about how cute Force Cat is, or you know anything. Um, so yeah, you can hop into the Discord. It's a good time. Uh, so then we are going to introduce our players. Uh, as we just said, we have four. He of the adorable cat. Uh, four, would you like to introduce yourself, introduce what kind of character you're playing, and anything else you feel like saying? Of course. Hello, I am four. I am a, a gorgeous horse groom by day, and... On Wednesday nights, I reveal my true form. Uh, Palak, the marvelous Cobalt Dragon Knight, who is venturing across the peninsula in order to bring knowledge, material gain, and honor to the Lore Eater, who is, well, a, a big dragon, as all kobolds are wont to want. <laughs> uh, and Dino. I, I am Dino Diner, and I am playing Weishi, who is a artificer gnome, and she's kind of just like small, small town girl in a giant, big, lonely world, trying to figure out where she belongs, and shoot a couple kneecaps on the way. <laughs> that catapult spell. Uh, we'll hop on down in the other order and go to uh, Miriam. Hi, I'm Miriam, and uh, I play the dwarven uh, moon druid, Durux, uh who occasionally becomes Barrux um, when needed, and uh, I can be found on the internets usually on on twitter uh at media underscore junkie and i am currently working on 
my South Asian fantasy setting serves a theme. Awesome. And there's also the Masafers podcast that I created. Oh, just, you know, that that's that little thing. That yeah. Little, little thing. Uh, how about Anino? Can you hear me? Yep, sorry. Okay. Um, my name is Anino. I am playing Brorook, who is a giraffe among penguins in this uh, party. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> I just love... right, you already broke me. I love that. Uh, giraffe among penguins. You saw that thing I posted with the penguin with like the the shiny rock, right? So yeah. That's yeah, very accurate. I like it. How about Sloan? Or uh, sorry, Seuss. Yeah. Well, I'm Seuss, um, and my character is Sloan. Um, the high elf cartographer, navigator, um, knowledge cleric, and soon to be divination wizard. Uh, yeah, she's just out here trying to explore and keep <laughs> secrets. Maybe. All right. Uh, so, um, all of that said, uh, thank you all for joining us for episode four. Uh, and as just a little brief recap reminder, Unprosperous Winds takes place in the world of Addis. It's a land where five city-states have existed in geographic isolation for all of written time, surrounded by an unpassable sea and its natural void called the Doldrums. Magic technological advances in the past 30 years have finally made exploratory voyages over the Doldrums possible, and a new continent was discovered. For more information about the setting, I have posted info blurbs in the Unprosperous Winds channel of the Discord. So there's our second Discord pitch of the evening. When we last left our game, our intrepid wannabe rescue party has discovered a abandoned town on the shore of the peninsula. Uh, and they also encountered a sort of militia unit that was patrolling and discovered it at the same time. And through a series of uh, almost miscommunications and almost robbery into a library, but it's fine. Uh, her knowledge. They all bunkered or hunkered down in the tavern of the town of Prosperity. Uh, exploring a little bit, they uh, gathered some mysterious clues in the laboratory, which seemed to have had some sort of accident. They popped by the hospital, where the doctor seemed to be kind of a mysterious figure in town. And they hopped on up to the lighthouse, which was their original intent in coming over to this part of the peninsula instead of continuing further. Uh, when they got to the lighthouse, Sloane did some really fancy stuff with her very cute little falcony friend. Uh, not Alice, jealous. <laughs> not. Who I'm absolutely not just role-playing a pygmy falcon. It's fine. Um, no, it's so cute. As they realized that something terrible clearly had to fall on this lighthouse, but before they were able to get a chance to investigate, they were beset by uh, more of those darn pirates that really want to get their friend Costa back. And that's where we left off. I have put up in the little right-hand upper corner of the screen... Just a, a little sketch of the road that goes up to the right the lighthouse, the little shack, the little fence area. And so that's where you all are in this kind of clearing, looking at a uh, clearing on, on a cliff, looking at the road where these pirates are uh, attempting to get their friend back. And there was, I think, already a little bit of aggression. And that is where we're at. I am barking at them. I believe somebody oh, no. had already pulled a weapon. It was me! <laughs> it was me! Uh, Bro Brooke yeah. actually pulled a weapon, too. Oh, oh. Did so I also did pull too. a weapon? <laughs> and I think I was ready to shift. Oh, you shifted already, I remember oh, that. Oh, did I? I yeah. shifted then. All right, so we've got a bear, a kobold, an orc, an elf and 
uh, a, a fisherman chef <laughs> <laughs> staring down they, at they, some pirates. They better beware. And I guess that was where we were going to roll initiative. Mm -hmm. I, uh, oh, I thought we were still trying to uh, do I diplomacy. I thought I left it at roll. Okay, no, we can do diplomacy. All right. Or lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was quickly spiraling from the yeah. attempts at diplomacy. Oh yeah, because I remember growling while in bear from like a. Hey. Right. All right. So, yeah, so trying we to were all putting. Uh, actually, yeah, I will let you uh, roll just an intimidate just to see how that goes for all of you. Uh, a group, a group intimidation check or one or two. I, I want to get a group. I want to just get how intimidating you all just seem. As a, oh. as a whole. I'm very intimidating with an 18. Or I hopefully. <laughs> Can I? Mm. Oh no. Oh gosh, I don't want to. Uh, okay. Let's, wow. let's try. Oh, rawr, rawr, rawr. Sloan and Palak are just. <laughs> All right, so with Dirac with an 18, Rorok with a 19, and Oishi with a 17. Yeah, yeah, all right. So we've got the, the bear uh, growling, the, the half-orc, you know, looking very tall and intimidating around all of these others. Maybe, uh, you know, they're just looking at the orc so they don't really notice the kobold sort of down there and um a stressed out wizard in the background they're also some of them are also elves so you know whatever they're they're not threatened by you but mm -hmm. something about oishi man i would be pretty intimidated We've seen if this. someone was pointing a pistol at my kneecap yeah so, absolutely you know. <laughs> so i absolutely uh think that they they kind of falter a little bit and some of them were getting ready to pull pistols. Some of them had uh, like sabers on their on their hips, and they're just kind of all looking a little a little nervous at at their their sort of leader person, the uh, the woman that was sort of standing in front of all of them, yelling about how Caldwell had told you all told them that you all had taken Costa. So, I just want to point out the pr obvious. I'm not really sure why Caldwell just didn't take Costa with him when he escaped. They were relatively unguarded in a room upstairs in an inn with everyone else sleeping. I mean, if Caldwell got away, I don't see why he couldn't have just gotten away with Costa too. Did you see the woman's face just drop? I mean, and turn sorry, to lady Caldwell. What? And he just looks a little trapped. Not so hot now, are ya? <laughs> you idiot. The there were very good reasons. Uh-huh. For a coward, yeah. Regardless, where is he? Uh, as I mentioned, he's back down in the abandoned town. You did mention that, but that was two weeks ago and I forgot. He's under arrest. You handed him to the authorities. Well, yeah. Under arrest. You sold them out, and then I realize I say it in bear form, so it's just growls. <laughs> I mean, frankly, it would have been easier if both of them just escaped, because we have actually very important things to do. So... Uh... Yeah, you don't have anything to do with the, you know... Lighthouse, right? What about the lighthouse? It's in distress. 
It's a lighthouse. It's in distress. And that means there's trouble afoot. And you're made of trouble, I can tell. What's your name? My name is Pelic, Dragon Knight of the Lore Eater. I am a devotee of Thela from the Lead Barrows, from the great place of Addis. And now I'm in the Peninsula with these fine fellows. Huh. And Brorook, who's very <laughs> tall. Why is he excluded from? Because he's the tallest. He has to be the, the you know, the gruff. Uh, oh, I've, I'm rough. I don't, I don't know what you mean. Not all leaders need to be. You're the leader, and then looks at you, Robert. I never said that. <laughs> but are you, are you some sort I of was... new militia? Uh, I just thought we were an autonomous collective. Uh huh. Hold on. And she turns and. Like, they actually like, get to a little huddle. Oh my god. <laughs> and you can hear that she is snapping at Caldwell. Or she good. tugs on Broek's leg. It's like, I think now would be a really good time to just, like, shoot him. They're not really paying attention to us. Or we could gracefully exit this situation. I feel like they have their own internal problems going on. But what if they follow yeah. us? Well, then they can get eaten by uh, the zombies or whatever. Fair point, fair I, point. I generally like to try to avoid as much violence as possible. Well, not that I think we're unskilled at it. Well, how about this? Let's just challenge them one-on-one -on -one into a champion fight like they do in the Barrows. And I think that'll settle everything and give us a good reputation. When you say barrows, I step forward. <laughs> no, we're, we're not going to fight them if we don't have to. They're we pirates, though. Other... No. They're made of bad things. Alec, think about it like this. If we waste our time fighting them, and we, you know, we, I saw what whatever was in the lighthouse did to even the front door, who knows what we could be encountering? We don't want to there. go into an unknown situation and hurt. You're right. I just, I just also want to point out that behind us is a really tall cliff. I can't fly. Yeah. I can only float, really. <laughs> All right, and the and the fire sort of turns on her heel and turns back at you. I hope they don't have Thunder Wave now that you mentioned that. Jeez. All right. We have our list of demands. So do I. Are y'all in a position to make demands? Yes. We'll lay it on us. You have one of ours. We'll take one of you, and then we'll trade back. Once you get Costa. Why do we need to work out a trade? Um, as I mentioned. Uh... Well, first they need a volunteer prisoner. <laughs> I volunteer. I, I mean, we have no obligation to you. Uh, your associate could have left and uh, taken, uh, could have left with your partner over there and uh, I, I just don't really see why this is any of our problem. And then she just looks back at Caldwell again. Fine. New demand. You're taking Caldwell with you. Why do we want why do we want the incompetent thief? He just looks miserable. Oh, I feel bad for him. Caldwell, go get Costa. 
He doesn't say anything. I mean, we're not going back to the town. We 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 have business with the lighthouse. So yeah, there's distress. She's clearly like doing breathing exercises. Do you want to come with us to help with the distress? Can I see if, does she seem to be like actually considering what we're putting forth or does she look like she's getting ready? to fight, like, from what I can, can I read her? Yeah, roll, like, roll, me, roll me some insight. Okay. Wow, we are not rolling great today. I had a, a seven. It's hard to tell. She is doing these kind of, like, breathing exercises, and you don't know if that means she's, like, trying to think or if she's getting ready to start fighting. Man, everybody on this island is stressed. <laughs> I mean, I just want to point out that fighting is just added stress, and it's not going to bring those stuff any closer to freedom. Can I get onto my like hind legs, like sort of be two footer rather than bumbling around in four, and give a bear hug, like not an aggressive bear hug, like a there there bear hug to <laughs> her. Uh, you can go ahead and s start moving in to do that. Yeah, I just waddle in like a. <laughs> oh boy, you better watch out! You better start those. The you better start apologizing. She kind of. I don't know what that bear's gonna do. She kind of screams and scrambles backwards, and then <laughs> grabs Costa by the arm and kind of shoves him in front of her. Not Costa, Caldwell. And I just get this like confused like. Ooh look and awkwardly hug Caldwell like there there oh. he doesn't really respond too obviously he, he kind of stiffens a little bit but he doesn't fight you I mean he knows what this is poor lad Gonna try to fix. True. All right. All right. Let's make something clear. We're gonna go to Lighthouse. If Caldwell wants to come and be useful to somebody other than you, sure. And maybe we'll reunite with you know the other fellow, felt feller felt. Fell, be pirate, druid. But we're leaving. Well, no, we we still need to look at this lighthouse. I know we're gonna do that first. So, just to clarify, the cliff is like is that above the lighthouse? Like, does it go down, or is it just like over the water? Uh, the the um. The cliff is uh, over the water, and the lighthouse is on kind of like a flat, grassy chunk on the cliff. How, like, far off from the side are we from the lighthouse, then? Uh, you are uh, at where the, the road turns into kind of like the driveway, basically, for the lighthouse. Gotcha. And there's just, like, a, a small like ineffective little mostly decorative fence in a circle. Gotcha. Or she just starts walking down the path towards the lighthouse. I follow. I follow. Still a bear. Uh Caldwell kind of goes with you, but feels weird about it. And and the rest of them just sort of stand there, with their arms crossed, at the at the base of the road. I I pose. I'm I'm putting all the aggression that my little cobalt body can into 
disrespecting their entire entire presence, especially Caldwell as he as he follows. I start strutting. And I'm like, wow, you must feel so special getting to travel with us without your fellow well, he's not, not do-gooders. Well, he's not staying with us for the long term. We'll just pass through the abandoned town on the way back. And I don't know. So we're babysitting. He, I don't even know why we have to babysit. We'll, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Oishi should just kneecap him here and we'll just leave him here. Huh. I mean, I can always throw him in the bag of holding. I, I, I don't, I'd prefer not. I mean, I, I kind of feel bad for you. You went through all the trouble of escaping, but man, you your boss just ended us. up bringing you back. Why did you escape? She's leave not my boss. Well, babysitter, I don't know. Custodian? A worker? Employer. Sister. Let's not bother with labels. Dinner. But it just comes out as grrr. Aw, Palette could have been like, yeah, I, that's, yeah. <laughs> no, but no. So you, it's not a very uh, long walk from the opening of the road to where you have to turn the little sort of driveway path and go up to the door of the lighthouse. And once you sort of get out of eye shot, or eye shot, that's a thing. Earshot, Earshot of the rest of the pirates. Caldwell actually kind of loosens up just a little bit and uh, looks down at uh, Oishi. You really intimidated her. Oishi just like reaches over, picks up a stone like off the ground, says bite me at it, and it glows a little and hands it back to him. And it just repeats bite me on loop forever. <laughs> He looks at it kind of Beautiful. quizzically, and then he tries to bite it. Rishi uses prestidigitation to make it taste like vomit. He pretends to eat the rest, but you, you kind of like see that he palms it really poorly. Thank you. That was a, a great snack. You're very hospitable. Are you starving? You're eating a rock! It had instructions on it. Oh, is she? Oh. I don't think he understands idioms. Huh. All right. What is, is this individual equipped with? Mil mil marsh marshally. I would have said militarily, but I think uh, we're far, you, far beyond you that. You don't see anything of a very sort of impressive note. There is a small dagger strapped to uh, their hip, but you do recall that Caldwell is the one that um, had been using druid magic on the boat. So, that's, that's not a so long ago memory that you don't recall that this is a magic user. I think I'll. I, th I think our own Jude will put you to shame. <laughs> I mean, already. All right, I'm like uh, obviously not expecting us to be friends or anything. I just don't really want anyone to kill me. That'd be really nice. Um, well, why are you here, first of all? We had to get Costa back. No, like, like existentially, why are you here? Like, why are you in this place? You could what be like purpose? on on Addis, you know, having the regular life like most people do instead of yo ho hoing. Well, well, that's that's just we, we go back and forth. All the, what is wrong with that door? Oh, yeah. and that is when uh, you all see that the wooden door to the lighthouse has been uh, very clearly like ripped off of its hinge and it's just kind of hanging by one little hinge. This is what Atlas was seeing, you guys. 
can I investigate it and sort of like see if it was um, opened by a creature or something, like using my bear paw for size? Sure, yeah. Um, roll investigate. All right. Oh, uh, that's a nat 20. Woo. So 23. Most impressive. All right. Um, it does not look like a bear paw. You know that much. Um, mm -hmm. But there is definitely uh, something that looks maybe kind of like talons, you'd say. The, the, the sort of pattern of how it was ripped in its, in its uh, little locking mechanism has some gouges that are just spread apart a different way, you'd think, than sort of mammalian paws. And it definitely seems more, more talon-like. Uh, but is it about the same size. Uh, about just, the same size. Just different. Um, but also, like that was you know clearly ripped apart very suddenly and uh, rough. But in addition, there are paint splatters. It looks like paint. You think uh, in these sort of symbols on the doorway. Uh, I point out the talons and the symbols, still saying in bear form. When I look at the symbols, I think I asked this last time if they were in any language I recognized. So you said, oh, here my notes have said I did not recognize them. Right. So, they are, uh, they're written in some sort of white, whitish kind of gray paint, uh, and you, you do not recognize them. Um... Sloan will kind of turn to the group and be like, do we want to head in right away? Or can you guys wait for 10 minutes while I try something? Or is she wanna... shrugs? I think let's at least get an, uh, an idea of what's inside so that there's nobody yelling for help or in need of medical attention. OK, fair enough. I could wait. And then I'll take a look to see if there's any strange magical things going on. Um, do you all have any, uh, because we said before that there there's no lights on inside this particular house, do any of you have any uh, magical lights that you are going to turn on or regular mundane lights? Do I need to turn into a fire beetle again? I um, have dark vision. She <laughs> can also make the little flashlight thingies again if need be. I kind of like my bear form. Does anyone I, not have dark vision? I think a flashlight can't hurt. Uh, Oishi will make two little flashlights from random pebbles off the ground. So okay. It is five foot radius of light. That's excellent. Okay, whoever's going in front maybe should hold one in. Or someone doesn't have dark vision. I volunteer. All right, uh, so if Falik is going forward, I am going to say there's a content warning for this next scene, some gore. Uh, Falik walks in to this lighthouse. It is a sort of a rounded, uh, large round chamber at this base. And you can tell pretty immediately that uh, there are smears of what is fairly unmistakably blood uh, on the floor. Uh, and you can see the stairs that lead sort of up to the rest of the lighthouse. And you can see more of this smear uh, on the stairs. That doesn't look good. I go sniff the smears. Yeah. Can I give like a help action or help investigate too? Sure. I mean, you you go over and you uh, being in bear form, absolutely no problem recognizing that this is at least humanoid blood. Has that smell to it. Yeah. And I crinkle my nose 
and I sort of mimic like point at any at any of the uh, party members and then I sort of like do like a ripping across the throat sort of like you know like that's blood Who wants to be the first to go up the stairs? I think I'll be the first. I'll draw both my scimitars and Palak will ascend. I will follow after Balak. All right. Um, you don't have a hard time getting through the door. You're you're fine with that. These stairs are a little uh, rickety for a bear. They are they are wooden spiral stairs on on kind of uh, delicate looking metal railings. I will gingerly follow. <laughs> is anyone staying downstairs or is everyone planning on heading upstairs? Uh, Brooke is going to actually look around the door and see if the blood trails or if there are any blood trails that have dripped or, um, you know, exiting the lighthouse yeah, in some fashion. Okay. Um, I would like you to roll an investigation check if you are paying a little bit more close attention to the blood trails. And if Broke is staying down, well. yeah. If Broke is staying down to investigate, Sloan wants to start casting the tech magic as a ritual. Okay. Yeah. Tech magic as a ritual. All right, I'll write that down. That was a fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, it, Dino, are you helping with this investigation at all? Or are you going? Yeah. Up? Yeah. I wish you would be helping with the all investigation. Right. I'll let you roll with advantage then. Uh, is that the advantage for Anino or me? Yes, Anino. Sorry. Okay. Oh, uh, I can roll again. Yeah. Uh, well, all right. Yeah. So no. it's the fourteen. <laughs> it's fourteen. Um, so, uh, you and Dino, while oh, you and Dino, sorry, you and Oishi, while Sloan is starting her ritual, poke around this bottom chamber, and it is actually pretty clear to you all that the blood uh, smears indicate that uh, the dragging actually uh, is coming down from the stairs and as you sort of look around the stairs you see that there are what look like fingernail gouges in the wall and just some some more blood from that what you're what you're ascertaining from this situation is that it looks like somebody was being dragged who did not want to be and was trying very hard not to be dragged uh but it doesn't lead out of the lighthouse uh you you go around the bend of the 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 spiral stairs because they kind of take up a good chunk of this floor and you find a much larger pool of blood and what you are starting to worry are uh, chunkier uh, viscera and it doesn't go anywhere else. I have no idea what could have done something like this, but... Uh... It's kind of strange that given this big of a mess that we see around here, there, the perpetrator didn't leave any traces of blood outside of the lighthouse. Can Oishi check or tell if there is enough bodily mass to equate to a full person? There is not. Well, it looks like something probably ate whoever this used to be. At least some of them, anyway. Good lord. And Sloan, you are casting this spell, and it doesn't take you very long to real to... You... As you're casting it, before you're even done casting it, you are starting to feel these sort of waves of magic that you have never felt before never before never before okay yeah sloan definitely she's like got all her 
she's got like a crystal ball type thing in one hand and Atlas is like on top of her head and she's really concentrating and starting to look more and more distressed as she finishes the ritual, which will take like 10 minutes or so. Yes, as you uh, get to the end of your casting time, this sense of unease continues to build up in you as, and it doesn't make any sense to you, but it seems like the room gets even darker and it's almost almost 10 minutes have happened and your eyes start to shut and you open them again and you get this flash of this this horrible vision of these two large beaked creatures but they seem skeletal and then you see the regular room again and you continue trying to remain concentrated on casting this spell you shake it off and then you cast the spell and you see it's nighttime and these two giant skeletal bird creatures are just feasting on oh it's horrible this person who is still screaming and it's there's these flashes of purple and and you just scream and shake your head and then the room comes back and they're gone. Okay, yeah, Sloan will definitely probably honestly either start like yelling for people to like come in after she has that vision and like will be like curled up into a ball after that happened. So she, like she knows like Broak and Oishi are in the other room, so she'll start yelling for them. Like it's worth noting that Caldwell is just squished up against a wall, staring at the scene in horror. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask how Caldwell was reacting to all of this. Poor lad. Um, I'll just yell down the stairs. Is everything okay? And no, you it's hit not. Bare butt. <laughs> Blah. Uh, the blood is less. It's lessening the further up you go in the lighthouse. Up the stairs. Oh, were you calling out or going down? Well, I was going up, so I I come down just to make sure everything's okay, and it's clearly not. Um, was there anything that would catch Pelic's immediate notice further up? Uh, about halfway up the stairs, there is a huge uh, blood splash on the wall, and that's about where it all starts. Okay. Oh. I sniff it. Does it smell like everything else? It does. It smells humanoid. Okay. But is this blood fresh, by the way? How long has it been here? It's not extremely fresh. It. Uh, I'll give it to Jarak actually, just for you know being in bear form. You think that this was last night. I sensing that whatever was here is no longer here and hasn't been here for a while. I am going to shift back to dwarf form and say whatever was here is gone. This might have happened last night. And I head down with Balak. Palak is sullen. He wanted to come here and save someone in distress. But he's concerned, so... Sloane, what's wrong? Yeah, Sloane will be... She's sitting in the middle of the room and her knuckles are like white around her crystal ball and she's like, uh, well, I was, I was trying to see what kind of magic was around this place if any and I, I don't normally feel like this when i when i cast or when i practice magic but i just started to feel worse and, and worse and then i opened my eyes and it was nighttime in here and i saw these big skeletal creatures just picking somebody apart i think 
I don't know, I've never had visions like this before, but I think someone might have been attacked here. Last Would you night. like a good berry? Actually, yeah, that'd be really helpful right now. I give I give you a good berry. Well, the attack started on the stairs above, so they must have gotten dragged down here. Where did the rest of it go, though? Where did it end up? I just saw it. they looked like these huge skeletal bird dinosaur things, and they were feasting in like a in this room, I think, or in the. But if you see where Boruk and Orishi went, I don't know if they're looking at something, but they definitely, like you could see, dragged something here and tore it apart. But they're not here anymore, right? You didn't see anything upstairs? We didn't well, go didn't. all the way up. I only went halfway because I was worried because you yelled. Yeah, well, you had right to be worried. And then Sone will stand up and go see if she can find um, Roark and Arishi to see what they're looking at. Yeah, they're just kind of across the room looking at the, uh, the various blood pools. So Broke is gonna poke um, Caldwell a little bit with his with the butt end of his spear. <clears throat> what? Hey, hey, <laughs> do you recognize any of those symbols up there on the wall? Care to elaborate? We don't really know. You don't Why? really know? We just know they seem to mean that they mark where they've feasted or something we don't who's they they're big and they come at night caldwell listen we're new here okay and you could probably assume we're pretty good at what we do and Regardless, somebody was killed here last night. We saw the distress call when we first came here. We should have been here earlier, but we didn't really realize what was going on. You have to be honest with us right now. You can't hold anything back. We don't know anything and nobody will tell us anything. That's why we took over the fort. Because everyone's pretending like nothing is wrong here. Are they summoned by these rooms? We don't know. We don't have enough resources to investigate this. So they mostly come at night. They seem to. And they mark their feeding grounds. Seems to be after they've already taking care of a spot. What do the locals call them? They don't. They pretend they don't exist. Well. Have you ever seen them in the same spot twice? We don't have time to, to look. We, we just stay at the fort and guard it and... We're oh. doing things differently now. You want resources? Well... If nobody else is looking into this, then by the lore eater's might and great knowledge, I will get to the bottom of this and slay these things. <laughs> Rurik is just sitting there leaning on his spear, I'd say, staring upward. Sorry. I'd say you all seem really nice, but you don't. Uh, but you all seem really tough. You, 
I, I don't lead us, so I can't. I... Most of us... I think probably came here like you all. And then found that it was not what we thought. Not what you expected? There's something weird going on. Yeah, I'll say. If you talk to Marigold out there, she probably won't be nice to you, but she tried a long time ago to go to the academy and tell them. Perhaps they just kicked her Was this the Academy of Cartography and Navigation and Buoyant Crafts? Yeah. They just want to explore. And they don't care that there's something wrong here. Perhaps we've disturbed some creatures, natural breeding and feeding grounds. I don't know if you could really call them a creature, though. I mean, if they're leaving symbols like this, they may be just sentient. We should probably jot these down keep these as a reference. Sloan will take out her notebook and start sketching. You could search the rest of the lighthouse. I don't think there's anything else to be found with all these blood around here. I go upstairs and investigate, see if there's any belongings, any journal, any clues. Uh, she just... It's a pretty quick investigation. Uh, it seems by all of the personal effects and things that were here that it was probably just a two-man, two-person uh, lighthouse operation. They lived in the shack and in the base of this lighthouse and uh, no longer seem to be here. Uh before we leave, so this is something that whenever we actually leave this place, I kind of want to make a small pile of rocks, like a sort of a memorial next to the lighthouse for these two, which was also partially why I was looking for any sort of personal effects for names, so that their names are, someone remembers them. Okay. Uh, what you've got are, uh, by just finding some sort of like, you know, old mail and stuff, uh, the two, the two names that you find are Gavin and Alice, but Alice is spelled like A-L-Y-S, so you're not mm -hmm. sure if that's a gendered name or not, but, um, yeah, so you got. Yeah, so if we're not doing anything else, I start making a little rock file thing. While she's doing that, uh, Bro Rook is going to exit the lighthouse. Um, maybe motion Oishi to follow him, and uh, he's going to head to the sh uh, to their dwelling. Where she nods and follows. Okay, it's a very, very uh, simple little, it's just a one-room shed. There's a little uh, wood stove in one corner and a uh, two little twin beds. Are she just going to investigate and see if there's any, like, signs that something's happened here as well? Sure. I I'll there's there's nothing just abnormal here. It, it, it really just seems like people lived here who were not particularly I don't want to say interesting, but nothing mysterious or weird about it. They were lighthouse keepers. Are there any maps or um useful navigation things or notes around that uh might be of use to us? 
there's not really any many maps other than just kind of like a little bit of the coast. Uh, if you go all the way up to the top of the lighthouse, you'll see that they have a little sort of like log guide of uh, just sort of like the symbols there that they or the the codes that they use to. You know, it's very foggy. There's you know this sort of storm. Be careful as you're approaching. Etc. Oh. oh, I don't even think we know if any of or all of these things are connected in some fashion. Well, we didn't see any viscera in the town, so we can easily deduce that whatever happened here is an isolated incident from whatever happened back there. That's true. Yeah, but we were awfully unprepared. If we could get some some undeniable proof that there, there are monsters here, then maybe we can, I don't know, make the other guilds and nations listen, do I mean, something about it. There is always one way we could try to find out. We could just camp out until night. I was thinking the same thing. We could use Caldwell as bait, too. What? I mean, you're not really doing anything else, so, you know, be useful. Use your druid magic. Look delicious. Caldwell actually does, like, as you're saying, use your druid magic, Caldwell just shifts down into a chipmunk. That's perfect! <laughs> and just gets up against the corner of the wall. Uh, Oishi uses uh, prestidigitation to make him smell like a really nice cooked meal. Okay. You've never That's seen great. a chipmunk look affronted, but the chipmunk's <sighs> sniffing and looking affronted. Sloan um, will kind of turn to the group and be like, do you think if we confronted anybody in town about this, they would say anything? Probably They'll probably not. make excuses that there's plenty of other things that they have to worry about. But the fact of the matter is, is that this is the lighthouse. This is what keeps supplies, people, reinforcements coming in. It has to be functional and safe. I mean, I could show them what these monsters look like and show you, know, you can make a drawing, but it's not like it's, it's, it's a corpse or anything. Like if we had the actual body of them. So we'll cast a uh, minor illusion and see if she can make like a mini version of what she saw I, in her vision. I attack it. I try to kick it and step on it uh, <laughs> in so her palm. You, you try to cast minor illusion to replicate what uh, you saw, but, and the entire room sees this. When you start to cast this spell, there is just this purple pulse. And instead of making a minor illusion, it, like the entire scene shows up just exactly true to size that you saw it earlier. Your power just flares out in purple, just waves. And then everyone sees, as I described, this horrible screaming scene of skeletal beaked creatures uh, eating these people. Is this the same purple that Oishi saw when she got yes. stuck? Yes. Okay, Oishi just kind of freaks out. It's the purple. This is exactly what I was talking about. I'm, I'm not crazy. See, that's the purple. It's back. You've seen this before? This has never happened to me. I don't, I, I I don't understand what's happening. I didn't see the creatures, but I saw the purple. Maybe they're coming from this alternate place that I keep seeing, or that I saw. I don't... Oishi kind of just like impatiently starts like tapping her foot on the ground as she, her mouth's moving faster than her or as her brain's moving faster than her mouth can the so. other of you guys have been casting spells right or is it only affecting i'm gonna try and cast well yeah i'll try and cast thaumaturgy and make the door move on its hinge or something like innocuous like not relating to the monsters Do at all not like this magic uh, you try to do that, and the door, uh, your magic just flings itself out with purple, and and the door actually cracks off the last remaining hinge and flies off across the cliff. Okay, that's enough. Out right. of curiosity, 
I try to cast a thorn whip at like the nearest brush or bush, like just just to see whether my magic does the same thing. You cast thorn whip, it does what it usually does. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the spell description. Maybe mm -hmm. druid magic is different? Well, druid magic <laughs> is a uh, primal magic, whereas, you know, uh, arcane magic like me and Sloan have been casting is, well, arcane. Right. So, you know, it doesn't seem like divine magic was affected either, though we would have but to have someone else confirm. So, Thaumaturgy is divine spell, but maybe it's just me. Maybe it's something I did. Sloan looks. Or she will try to replicate the scene she saw also using Minor Illusion to see if the same thing occurs. Uh, you are able to make a small Minor Illusion. It's kind of like a game of telephone at this point. Like, you didn't see the original, so it's kind of just like some skeletal birds in your hand moving around. Aw, it looks so cute. They are pecking at tiny bloody humans. It's still tiny. <laughs> I think when you casted Detect Magic, that's what caused you to tap into it, because that's what happened to me last time. It was, it was, it was only after I finished that that I saw the purple world. Maybe. Maybe I have tapped into something. So now it's like a song that you can't get out of your head? Yeah, except worse. Uh, could I, make I don't know. I know some pretty bad songs. <laughs> <laughs> could I make an Arcana check? The Lore Eater's like, playlist is awful. <laughs> uh, what are you doing to, to make this Arcana check? Are you just trying to like jog your memory about magic types that you know, or are you... Yeah, I think Sloane is just... She's not going to try and cast anything. She's just trying to rack her brain to figure out like if she's ever read about or ever heard of something like this. Sure. She will try to assist by listing all the random miscellaneous Arcana knowledge she knows. All right. Uh, I can... will detect magic as a spell slot to see if the same thing happens to me. Okay, mm. let's uh, let's let's go in order real quick. So Oishi is helping Sloan. Uh, so Sloan roll Arcana with advantage. Who? Oh, natural twenty. Oh, wow. All right. Um, and at the same time that you're thinking about this real hard, and Oishi is uh, rattling off facts at you. Thank you, Oishi. Direct, uh casts detect magic. All right, um, you are you're, you're doing it as a spell and not as a ritual. Yeah, cause uh, yeah, cause I figured it would be faster. Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 da. And uh, just some clarifying questions: You are casting this as a druid, so when you cast it, it is. Uh, is i didn't think about this give me just one moment sure i need to consult a note sure i think all all gasters get detect magic okay it's a universal spell that way but when when you tap into detect magic as a druid are you using uh, natural magic or uh, are you technically using other magic this is like a tricky D, &D thing i didn't think about. i i think for flavor i would be sort of you know using what i know of druidic magic so like dap dapping from nature dapping from the land um and maybe my focus would be more on any unusual magic but Mechanically, it's the same spell. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so, for flavor reasons, um, Azrak uh, cast this spell rather quickly because it's not a ritual, uh, and Sloane and Oishi are thinking about magic. Um, what you instantly feel, Dirac, is uh, this. And it, it's not as I described to Sloane. It is uh, a a very uncomfortable uh, dimness uh, crosses over. Oops, I just smashed my microphone. Let's start that over real quick. 
stop vibrating. Okay. Um, you you feel very uncomfortable, and a kind of sort of dimness washes over your vision. Um, and you do see kind of just like in these like waves that sort of like the waves of the ocean are coming out of this room just but they're like diminishing just ever so slowly like like the tide is is going but it's still there and it's still very uh purple but it's it's making your heart feel tightened like like something is gripping at you and you do not like it um but at the same so, time for the for the intent of detect magic you do think that this is something related to the magic that you were taught about as being etheric magic but you have never felt it like this and it's it's just very tight around your chest and these waves and every time the waves pass over you it just hurts more and I sort of step back, like, to kind of catch my breath. And I say, I think, I think I know what it is. It's, 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 like you said, it's purple, but this, this is like. And life as, being out. As you are trying to get these words out, Sloane, you are, analy you're thinking really hard about. The way that this magic has been manifested in this room and you turn at the right moment and you see direct kind of backing up and you actually see that direct has started to glow in a very faint green but that there are these waves of purple that are sort of like attacking her almost they're they're them uh they are just smashing into them and you can't tell if anybody else can see this or not but it's almost like like these waves of purple, and uh, then there's these sort of tendrils that are coming out of these waves and trying to uh, sort of smash into Dirac, and Dirac just looks like they are not doing so good. We need to get out of here right now, uh, and I'll like run, go over to Dirac to kind of like bodily try to drag them out of the lighthouse almost Be like come on the, we need to get out of here yep it's really bad we need to exit I, I do not resist and i leave uh yeah if you all sort of book it out of this room uh direct once you are out back in the fresh air again you are able to sort of shake it off but your chest feels tight this is ether magic yeah, while you were casting that spell, I saw it, it looked like the energy in the room was trying to attack you. It was purple, like Oishi was saying. It was coming at you in like tendrils and waves. I don't know. I I feel weird about going back do? in here. I mean, I guess if it was affecting my magic like that, I don't. I'm I'm not an expert at this. This is way out of my wheelhouse. I pop a good berry in my mouth. It's more for f comfort and familiarity than anything else. Do you think those symbols might be some sort of cause of this? Maybe. I mean, I made sure to take them down, so if we ever find anything oh. out more about them. So, but... um, so Brorook is going to take his spear, um, and uh, he's going to try to scratch and uh, disfigure all the symbols on the wall. Okay, yeah, it's no problem. It's like some sort of sort of maybe clay paint or something, and you just scratch it all off. Could I? So I'm wondering. Would it be possible for Palak to make some sort of like history or nature check to figure out if like the minor illusions that they showed us, if these creatures like are more susceptible to like bludgeoning or slashing damage? 
Like, is it because they you, you guys said skeletal? So I'm like, like Palak is trying to make a game plan here. He's like trying to figure out like, well, how do we kill them well, efficiently? Well, you, you saw it. So when the minor illusion that Sloane cast filled the room and showed everyone what Sloane had seen, uh, you saw that they. It was very dark, but you also could tell that it wasn't like they were skeletons per se, but there were very bony and there were sort of like, like not a whole lot of skin stretched over skeleton. You could see a little bit better because of, of the way that you were uh, dark vision. Um, In my dark vision. And they had very, very large bony heads with beaks. But, uh, uh -huh. you would guess that it does look as if they have some level of flesh to them, but this is not anything that you've ever seen before, so you aren't sure precisely what you think may be best to hurt it. Does it look like they can see in the dark? Like, do, do their eyes kind of, like... Well, you did only see it for, for a short amount of time, so. And it was too dark to tell whether or not the 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 recesses sort of in, in the head had eyes in them or, or, or anything. You couldn't tell. So I know you guys went through the ringer when you were casting your spells. So does anyone want to hazard another attempt? She nods and sits down cross-legged and begins to try to use detect magic again. Oh, good golly. <laughs> you guys are... This is scary. How are we learning anything? I mean, maybe. All right. Uh, you're doing it as a ritual or are you doing it as a spell? As a ritual, yeah. Okay. Are we all outside the lighthouse at this point? Or are I believe, we like I believe that uh, Dirac and Sloan are outside and everyone else is still inside. Uh, I'll go no. outside. Oh no, because we Broderick went, we was went to scratching this... off the. I scratch it off, but I would exit out. So. Okay. She's probably chilling near the puddle of viscera. Just chilling. I mean, it's okay. stronger connection. She she assumes. So. All right. Yes. So you, uh, it takes you ten minutes. Uh, what do the rest of you do in that ten minute span? Just catch your breath, let it happen, or there's a house nearby the lighthouse, right? On the map. Uh, yes, it was a little shack, and Oishi and uh, Oishi already went in there and saw that there were two little, like twin sized, people sized beds and a wood stove. Palak just paces. He like he's itching to fight, but he has to probably wait until nightfall for this thing to show up. Yeah, Sloan is probably just like sitting with darts and like she's like rolling her crystal ball back and forth in her hands and sitting with Atlas and just trying to calm herself down. Well, once we get the once we see what happens out of this, we should probably head back down. Are we staying here to bait it at night? Do you, are we I don't going? think it, I don't think there's any point. I mean, if I was a hunter or if I was a predator, I would not come to this remote section to hunt. This well, unless you knew there was something to hunt. Well, are we supposed it, to predict where it will go next, or are we trying to catch it in the act? I, I mean, if we're if we're going to try to catch it in the act, that should probably catch it while it's trying to hunt something but odds are if they come back here they're going to figure out our trail unless we work hard to try to hide it and they're going to come after us i don't see why we need to stay here and let them uh, find us here and fight us here we should head back down into that bandit town and uh try to figure out our next move there. At least we can uh, fight on our own terms. 
instead of this place. Seems large enough to fit into a lighthouse, so I'm not sure cover will protect us. I would rather not fight near a cliff, uh, especially if these things can uh, fly or move in some fashion. I mean, if we need to abandon ship and leap off a cliff, I can make sure we float down okay, but that's so the worst here's case the scenario. Yeah. That's assuming your magic doesn't uh, flare up in an uh, unpredictable manner in the same way that it just did a while ago. I mean, you do have a point. Do you think the creatures themselves are affecting it, or is it the symbols? I have no idea. Uh, I mean, that's why I scratched out the symbols and asked Doishi to try to cast something, see if there's actually any effect, and then we could probably make the assumption that the symbols are that cause. Sloan will like lean forward and see if she can see Oishi through the doors. Still casting. Oishi is still still casting. At any rate, I don't think we're going to find any more answers here. Well, I agree. I'm the... going to stupidly just look at the trees and see if there's like I don't know creature-sized nests on the <laughs> trees. You don't see anything like that that would fit the, the size of these things. I just thought I'd check. Yeah. At any rate, I think we're kind of overwhelmed here at the moment. I mean, we have. It's pretty grisly. Well, I'm just saying we have three different options or we have three different events that are going on, and we don't even know if they're all connected. I mean, maybe probably even counted as four. We've got this event here. We've got the zombies. This, or... Well, we got the. Uh, um... I mean, it's no more grisly than a sky funeral if you check on it a couple of days later. I'm not saying it's not a part of being grisly. I don't. It's not that that's overwhelming. It's the fact that uh, we have basically four separate challenges and we that are not necessarily connected together. So uh, we can't just, been... we, we, you gotta pick a direction and we gotta go and pursue it in that fashion, so. Well, we came here originally to see whether the what's wrong with the lighthouse because that would affect the ship that we were supposed to go back to at some point. Well, Are we were we? here to answer the distress signal. And we kind of did answer the distress signal. But there isn't anyone here left to save. So, you know, either we try to figure out that mystery with the, uh, the fungus infected people, or we try to figure out where the abandoned town is, or we hunt these weird creatures. Uh, question to the DM. Mm -hmm. The purple magic that w that Oishi found was that in relation to the fungus, or was that something nope, else? No, that was when Oishi was poking at that lab that had okay. the glowing around it that first night. Okay. I mean, do you think this is at all related to the fungus or the zombies? I mean, there could be something larger behind all of this, or it could be, like you said four or three competing things that we have to choose. Well, skeletal birds, zombies. At this point, we're going to slide over to Oishi. And you are casting oh your ritual of detect magic. And it doesn't feel as if it's going kind of as wrong or weird as it went that night that you were right next to that lab. It, you, you're starting to get the sense that the the strangeness in the magical energies is is again starting to sort of dissipate um, and you you feel as if you know based on what you both saw going on with direct that clearly some of that magical energy went towards attempting to attack them which was strange but a, as you continue to cast this uh, ritual, uh, you don't see that much purple. It is just sort of a low-lying fog that starts to 
to spring up in the room, just like a, a, a light purple mist. And nothing very dramatic happens while you're casting it. But you do feel once you have cast the spell that there is a slight just sort of shift in things. The time of day doesn't change and nothing else really changes that you can tell. You still see the blood and oh, that's gross and are looking around and, and nothing is different but everything is different and you don't know why. She starts replicating the runes that Brooke had scraped off onto the wall. Uh, before you can do that, you hear a knock on the door. Alice? Gavin? Uh, which is funny because the door's not there. Um. Alice? Hello? And, and you hear a creak of a door. And an Eric Coker walks into this room. Very tall, sort of golden and white feathers. Alice! Gavin! It's Akil! They said you were uh, putting out a distress signal. And uh, the arrow cooker walks into the room and looks around. Uh, it's just sort of doing a scan of the room, walking around, walks into the center of the room. Are you upstairs? Huh. And the arrow cooker just walks through the room, yelling, walks into the puddle doesn't seem to notice. Uh, and then goes over to a little side table, uh, scribbles a note, and walks away, and you hear a door shut. She heads over to the where the note was laid and checks to see if it's still there. Uh, it is starting to fade, but you do see that it just says, Alice and Gavin, please let us know what's going on nothing looked strange uh maybe you just went out of town and forgot to tell us uh no no big deal really but do remember that you are supposed to help me with the pie uh tomorrow so hope that we're still on for that signed akil beakstotir Rishi uses her magical tinkering ability once again to replicate a static visual image of both the Eric Akoa and his name on, um, I'm trying to think of what tiny object that would be sitting around. Um, you, do, you do find yeah. a, a piece of paper as, as it's fading, you do see that there is a blank piece of paper right there. Okay, she uses that piece of paper. So she she heads out afterwards and then just kind of like tries to get everyone's attention. It's like I, I I have a lead. Sloan and Atlas perk up at that. There was uh Eric Akoa. He he was pretty big. Um I th I think it was a yeah, I don't know. Uh, they had a nice voice. Um and she just like kind of like shows the picture to the rest of everyone. And uh, maybe we could head back to town and ask them if they know who this is. I mean, it's a, it's an avenue and we can also ask them if they're willing to contribute to whatever is happening here. Yeah, I don't think that's happening, but uh... We might as well at least do Marigold a solid and see if we can maybe exchange Caldwell for uh, Costa. Wait, what? 
What? Why would I be exchanged? Well, I mean, it's pretty clear that Marigold prefer Costa over you, so... Well, that's just because they're married. Well, maybe you should have thought of that. I am not marrying my sister. What's wrong with you? Well, oh, then sure. they, they really don't like you. Oh, you, you, you goofed. Yeah, I mean, the fact that your sister just abandoned you to us was... Uh... Ugh. Guess you're not that close. He just glares. I at feel you. bad. <laughs> cool. uh, so, is the general thought that you're heading back to prosperity? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. All right. So you all start to make the journey back down the street, back down the road, uh, down the hill to prosperity. That, as you recall, takes. Uh, a good 45 minute walk and that is where we are going to take our break so uh before we hit go on this button we do want to thank everyone that has cheered so far and also we want to thank very much our uh, vip circle patrons uh jaxi donald g nerdy t and michelle e thank you so 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 much for being part of the vip circle and we'll be right back.
Welcome back uh, to On Prosperous Winds. You are watching episode four, and I have just laid down uh, the rest of the weird, weird mystery going on in this world for my wonderful players. And in the interim, they have also all leveled up. So I would just like to just do a little bit of a go around real quick again, recap who you are, and since everyone just leveled to that really fun level, uh, what a specific thing they chose. Uh, let's go with Sloan first. Yeah, sure. So um, I added a, well, my character is Sloan, high elf, um, knowledge cleric slash divination wizard now. So I picked my second level in wizard. And yeah, pretty soon I'll be able to affect the future, affect events um, in interesting ways. Yeah. I'm very excited for that. Brorook. Hi, uh, my name is Anino, and I play Brorook, who is a uh, half orc ranger, and uh, he is now going to be the group's boogeyman because um, he is a gloom stalker. I'm so excited. How about Miriam? So I am playing a circle of the moon druid and my new level continues in that fashion and um one of my choices uh is definitely second from second level spells and i picked another ritual spell locate animals or plants well prepared anyways because i basically can give me 24 hours and i can change my spells but um <laughs> I like picking ritual spells because A, it's I can ritual cast it when I can, but also I like helping investigate what's going on. And to be honest, if I need to, I can just turn into a bear. Cool, cool, cool. And Dino, you have something pretty cool going on now. Right, so Oishi will be taking her third level in uh, the Artificer class, and she will be using a subclass that I have homebrewed based on the old archetype, the Renegade Mastermaker from 3.5, and then it's also had other iterations in 4th edition. Um, I basically brought that to 5th edition and made it less crazy mad scientist. Um, but there's still plenty of cra crazy mad science to go around, um, it's just you don't have to be evil to enjoy it. So I'll post a link in the Twitch chat just in case you want to take a look at what it does. Awesome. I'm very excited to show off some new stuff. And Palak. Hello, I am Palak, the Dragon Knight to the Lore Eater of the Lead Barrows. And I decided after looking up uh, a few things that I'm not going to be going with the Warblade now that I've hit third level. I'm going to be going with the Dragoon, which, as this little homebrew class describes, is a master of aerial combat with the Winged Spear. So Palak's Javelin is now going to be the focus and not the Scimitars because... I realized the creator decided that uh, that particular part of the the class would be strength based, not dexterity. <laughs> I have minus two strength <laughs> and five dexterity. Nice. All right. So our uh, characters also have a pirate named Caldwell in tow. Uh, and and uh, they are making. Is their he still a chipmunk? Chipmunk? Uh, no, he had popped out of chipmunk to indignantly uh, argue. So back back to back to being a person. Um, still indignant. Were we supposed to have an? Sorry, were we supposed to have another party member? Oh my gosh, Nellie's here, and I forgot her. <laughs> She made it outside because she no she was just like traumatized traumatized hanging out with the other I don't you, where'd Nelly go it's the fifth mystery uh, no <laughs> uh, she, she was she waited outside it's fine 
that. Oops. Yeah, yep. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Um. And making their way back down to Prosperity after having discovered that uh, the lighthouse uh, had been the unfortunate scene of some sort of awful murder. Very sad. Uh, and now they are heading back to the empty town that they've taken over temporarily. You, you're, you're walking out of the woods and you see the uh, more packed down road of prosperity and its buildings. The large uh, academy field office to your left surrounded by some just sort of shorter squat houses. A hospital sort of up the road and to your right and off in the distance you can see the Queen's Arms Tavern which is where you were sleeping the night before. So, um, is the militia still, uh, lurking or Presumably you don't prosperity? see them offhand, but okay, you're pretty sure that they were staying at that tavern and maybe going around and doing scouting. Uh, all right. What's the plan? We've got a lot of ground to cover. Uh, what time is it? We need to find that Arakura. 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 Thank you. <laughs> um... <laughs> So in answer to uh, you, Oishi, it's late afternoon at this point. Well, I mean, we're going to have to ask, so find someone to ask them about that. But I think that's our freshest clue right now. And it is worth noting that while Dino saw the Aarakocra, none of you saw anyone enter or leave the lighthouse while Oishi was casting that spell. Oishi, well, while well, you were in there, in there, did this Eric Hoker you're talking about, did they see you at all? No, it seemed like they were using a door that didn't exist anymore, that you, you know, kind of shot off the hinge. So I'm assuming it was something that happened in the past. So. You, you, I, I agree. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna be like, I agree. We should try and look out for this person and then maybe, depending on what we find, make a decision for what to do for the evening if we're gonna try and pursue this, these monsters. Better. Uh, Caldwell is Honest. just hanging out, kind of waiting. Yeah, first we should get Caldwell taken care of. And by that, I mean, maybe make an exchange and then try to convince. Honestly, I think prosperity needs to be fortified beyond what the current militia is. And by doing that, we should probably try to get the pirates to just stop being pirates and help prosperity. Will the com will the commander allow it? I mean, sometimes habits are hard to break. This is this is a lawless land, essentially. They they have as much authority as the pirates do. Right that's now, that's what I mean. Yeah, we should force them to. I mean, if they've been in denial about the lighthouse, the whole situation. Yeah, that's their fault. Well, well I... go ahead. Yeah, why are you so intent on trying to force the militia to help us? Do you, you don't think that we can resolve this on our own? No. I mean, I mean not in the long long run. They didn't Unless even tell we're us planning about... on staying here. Well, we're not staying here, but 
Well, I I don't know why you why why you want to stay, but I want uh, I to don't make want to, I'm I mean, not staying. I, I'm just saying that uh, I don't believe that uh, the militia is going to be of much help to us. Why are we going to bother with them? Because they're bodies in the field. They didn't even let us know about the skeletal creatures we saw back there. I mean, Caldwell said that people have been aware of it, but have been in denial or pretending it's not happening. Who's they should have at least set world? sentries at the lighthouse if it's so essential. Did well, they, they didn't. And I think that's a pretty good indication that uh, they're not going to be of very much help to us. Unless we make a case. I don't think we should just give up on them just because they failed to do their no duty. No yeah, offense, because... but we aren't exactly the most diplomatic and charismatic of people. Um, also, yeah. they could just say yes to us, and as soon as we leave, they'll just go back to status quo. Who's going to hold them accountable? I will. I will. I am an emissary of the lore eater. From and. The ship? Well, yeah. I'm here to protect the Lead Barrow's interests. There's materials that need to be secured and lives that need to be protected. And I guess I'm just asking, how are you going to do that when you're not physically here? Then I'll stay. If that's what it takes. I just don't know how much I can do by myself what, or ourselves. You guys are really powerful in your own special ways, but as the peninsula is, it's scary. Well, those creatures could be interesting to examine if we're not... we're not creature food. Well, you know I can turn into a bear, but one of the reasons I came here was to see more creatures, to see how they work, to learn to sh shapeshift like them, to serve the land in its many forms. And what have you seen? Death. A natural death. Whatever's happening on the peninsula isn't anything we've experienced before. I think you're getting a little ahead of yourself. I mean, I'm just saying what I've seen. I think Farwick does have a point, though. Before we can begin to address any of this, we need to take at least one concrete step to follow one immediate lead before we can go to the next thing. The worst thing I can imagine happening is another repeat of what happened at the lighthouse. And that only happened because people were unprepared and they didn't take the threat seriously. I don't think people really understand what this peninsula is. Well, that's kind of how new continents work. <laughs> Anyways, the point is, you you actually okay. do hear a cat yowling. It it starts. It comes out from behind a building, and it walks up to Pallet the door. Eats it. Pallet goes. Oh, 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 it walks up to the door of this house, and it is meowing and starts to scratch and is just looking up at this door very expectantly. Oh, she oh opens no. the door for it. Someone was feeding them and they're not here anymore. It, it must have been it a cast away. It bolts can I, into the house. Can I cast, speak with animals and have a conversation with this cat? Absolutely. Hey, talk to, talk to her. I've talk never, to her. never done cat before. What so did they let's say? see how this goes. Mm -hmm. So first I come and say, hello, what's your name, beautiful? My name's not beautiful. Okay, what's your name? 
Her name is Fancy. Hi, Fancy. That's a very fancy name. Do you have my dinner? I don't know where my mom is. Who's your mom? She lives in there. Kind of like gestures. I don't know. I don't in, cat. <laughs> in in the shed. No, you're back in you're back in prosperity now. You're, you're oh, right it's here. a prosperity yeah. cat. Yeah. Okay, what's your mom's name? Do you know? My mommy's mom. Right, that's true. Uh, she's big. Well, and gold and pretty. Well, we don't know where your mom is, but I can see if I can find some food for you and. I start looking around. She kind of, uh, she kind of like pats at your ankle. There's, there's a box, underneath the sink, and it's got the food in it. Okay, I head to the sink. Yeah, you and... you go into this house and you find there's there's you know a cat bowl on the floor. The food and the water are both empty. You can refill them. Yeah, I refill them. Then I she say... starts eating. I wait till. She finished, Fancy finishes eating. And then I ask, uh, so when was the last time you saw your mom? I don't know how to do cat. <laughs> Close <laughs> enough. This is great. I do bird. <laughs> bird is what I do. All right. Uh, yeah, so she starts doing the post meal cat bath yesterday. And what was your mom doing? I don't know. She usually lets me in the water scratch. Do you know what happened to all the people in this town? Did something happen to all the people? Well, they all disappeared at the same time. We're trying to find out what happened. That's really weird. Are you going to give me food now? I mean, maybe. I'm not sure. Every day. Preferably twice a day. I can do that, but if I don't stay around, do you want to come with me? Why? So that you still get food? No, we live here. But what happens if your mom doesn't come back? That doesn't happen. No. Okay. So I'm glad I can't speak cat. Uh, I'll ask you again later. Maybe you might change your mind. But I will feed you while we're here. While I'm here. She rubs up against you and is clearly like expecting to be pet for all of these questions being answered. I I, I do scritch and 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 bet as I'm having these conversation this conversation and almost kind of like if if the fancy wants to cuddle or sit on my lap, that's fine too. Uh, yeah, you you can scratch her for a couple of minutes. You get to the sort of one spot on her back where she yowls and then swipes at you. Don't get fresh. And then close their eyes again. Baby. <laughs> Buddy. That's all I know of cats is that you pet them and then like randomly they'll decide to scratch you. You don't know why. No. Nope. And then they go back into it. So nope. they're done. Yep. That's precisely it. Yep. And then she'll go curl up. There's a cat bed like on a windowsill. Like this is her house, clearly. Yep. Like she's she's curled up right now. Yeah. And I leave the cat. I leave Fancy to her devices and uh, return, and I uh, relay the conversation. Yeah, as as you're leaving the house, you see that on the sort of little like uh, black metal uh, sort of mailbox that you see on the outside of the the door, you see uh, a period beakstone here. Oh, this is Akil's house. Oh, that's Akil's 
Oh my god, did was there was there a bird person last night that we murdered? From the bodies? Yeah. Well, the the guards said that none of them look like the villagers. Okay. Let's just go with no for ease of ease okay. of that being ease of mind. Yeah. Peace of mind. Yeah, because I I did ask after our encounter, did any of them look like villagers? And the answer was no. Yeah. So. Maybe we should have a look around the house to see if there are any personal effects that we could uh, follow like up food. on as clues. Uh, sure. Although the cat might have something to say about it, but luckily I can still talk to Fancy I'll for chase an it. hour. I'll chase it off. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Fancy is napping, and unless you really get up over there, not gonna, not gonna care. Yeah, so not a really, really a nice, guard cat. Nice bead of sun that is coming down. And... Oh yeah, sun rays. Not really a guard cat. Uh, but you go into this house, and uh, it is a very. Uh, nice cute little sort of cottage there are mostly mostly floral prints on the furniture you'll you'll find uh and then in the kitchen where you had fed the cat you see that um on the counter is sort of a half made uh clearly in progress uh baking of a pie um like there's just sort of flour mess everywhere and a recipe on the counter and uh, is the butter gone? It's not gone, but it's got a film over it. It's not oh it's not so warm that it's just completely melted, but it's it's you can tell it's soft and filmy. Oh no, I meant in terms of does it look like a cat got to it? Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you meant gone, like it's gone off, like it's expired. No, no, no. Uh, no, still, it's still there. No, oh, this cat's a good cat. Doesn't steal all the butter. Uh, but there's nothing else really, sort of, of note other than this pie recipe. Uh, for the the beak stotier, uh, pie. Rishi casually pockets the pie recipe. That's what I was waiting for. Yep. You, you gonna go? F couldn't you just finish the pie while you're here? I don't know if her ingredients are actually good. But we can purify them. No, no. As in, they don't. They might not taste good. I don't know. You said there was nothing really of note anywhere else. Other, other house, than right? other than the the pie in progress and the cat, it's just a, a cozy little little house. Looks like only one person lives here. There's no sign of like a struggle or someone leaving in a hurry or not at all. The door had been unlocked, and there's just they all got teleported or something or something doesn't make any freaking sense. How does a whole town just disappear? Oh, Ishii, do you think your vision was in the past, or do you think people got transported somewhere else? Like, are we in the same place? Oh, what if they're all in the ethereal plane? What the hell is this ethereal plane that people keep talking about? You get me a portable hole I can show you. Sorry, I'm fresh out of those. <laughs> Wish she looks like really disappointed. <laughs> nice. If you find any, she kind of like kicks the floor a little. I need to remember to clip that later. <laughs> I'm <laughs> fresh out. <laughs> that was, I, that, um, yes. Thank you for that moment. I will treasure it. Carry on. <laughs> I mean, there was no, there were no clues at the house. That well, all we have are these. Uh, actually, we do have those clues. We never actually looked at them. The sheaves of paper that we collected from. Uh, uh, the yes, they place. are currently in the possession of uh, Wild's Our character, friend. who 
I just as a note, we'll be shifting to complete uh, NPC mode uh, because Wild got very exciting news, uh, but it does mean that Wild can't join us anymore. Oh no! It's a it's a good thing though. Well, yeah. is he, is uh okay? Well, um, maybe we should check up on. I'm sorry, I forgot Wild's character's name. Yeah, I was hoping nobody asked because so did I. Hold on, I got it listed right over here. <laughs> it's redacted. It's it's a name. It is a real name. It is just very far behind in my notes over here. I mean, we did only know him for about like twelve hours or so, so it wouldn't be too out of name. character for us to forget too. Where's the name? Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope Wild's not watching this and I'm totally messing up. Well, if name. you have all your if you have all your overlays, it should have Oh, you're name. right. You're right. Oh, it's Drixelin. Thank you. Drixelin. Yes. There we go. Well, we've given Drixelin some time to look over those notes. Maybe we can find out some information from there. I fortunately, I think this uh Beakstoder is a uh, dead end, so to speak. Nope, not. Figuratively, not literally. Where she shrugs anyway. and heads back towards the queen. The... I, I we left him at the tavern. Tavern, so. yeah. Mm. I scritch Fancy's head as we leave just before, like, just, like, I'll be back. It's like a slight sort of row and, and protest as you are trying to to wake wake her up, but yeah. Oh, I'm not trying to wake her up. Just scratch. no, like uh, 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 in protest as she thinks you're trying to wake her up. It's just like meow. Meow. <laughs> meow. Notes to self: Learn how to RP cats. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep for eighteen hours. <laughs> Sleep for eighteen hours. Wake up. Pets. Yell yell for food and attention. <laughs> go back to sleep. Okay, Eat butter. So I could just role play myself then. I see. <laughs> I, occasionally you you might go for a uh three AM jog around the entire house. Oh yes. Oh yes. yes. Oh, right. yes. No. <laughs> Some or sing Light the song of your people at 3 a.m. if you are that inclined. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Yep. wow. <laughs> Look, Ma, I've got a mouse in my mouth, no hands. <laughs> I had an outside cat uh, that brought us like a vol every day. Oh. The daily vol. Awful. Yeah, daily vol. <laughs> It was, uh, it was, uh, I'm saving that name, the Daily Vol. That's going to be like a newspaper somewhere. Yep. <laughs> I love that. Well played. It can be a tabaxi newspaper. Wait for that to show back up. It's happening. All right. It's going to be, it's going to be key to the plot. All right. I approve. My ears that just fell out of my ear. Come back. Okay. We're good. Uh, so you are all heading to the Queen's Arms? Was that the... Yes. Okay. Uh, so you head down the street uh, back to the Queen's Arms. You do not see the uh, militia that when you had left were cooking breakfast around the sort of outdoor fire pit area. And when you go into the Queen's Arms, it is empty. And it doesn't look as if anybody has started a new fire for the evening or anything. Uh, but there is a note uh, that is sort of tacked up above the mantle. It says, uh, Regards, Brorook, we have gone on patrol. Keep your group safe. Be back tomorrow. I don't really understand why everyone's putting responsibility on me, but it's because you're the tallest. I was just gonna say that. I was, I was gonna say you're that. the adult. Uh, signed, Marjorie. Uh, the spellier. No, is that the name? No, I don't know. 
Fine. Don't have the attention span of a goldfish. All right. Uh, yeah, and you don't see Drixlin either uh, downstairs where you left them. Did they steal the notes and disappear? I have no idea. Didn't even leave a note. Oh no. Are they part of the ghost town now? You know, because Ethereal... I left a note, so I assume that this was a planned disappearance. No, that was the guard. Or did Drixlin go with them? It doesn't, it no doesn't specify whether or not Drixlin went with them. Oh no, they're part of the ghost town now. Do we see oh. any of the papers left behind or anything? Like, is there like a stack where they were sitting? Uh, no, uh, Drixlin had set up at like a little desk, kind of not like a little, like a little table sort of in the corner. Uh, there's no sort of evidence that those papers were there, but uh, the chair and the desk are still in the same position that you left them in. Quishi, what if what you saw wasn't in the past, but in the present? In Ghost Town. That's what I was saying. Well, then, how would it explain that the people are still missing even though they're murdered now? Because they're not visible in Ghost Town. They're not dead in Ghost Town. So. But if they're dead, wouldn't they be in Ghost Town? Oh, you're right. Maybe they're whole in Ghost Town? Maybe their spirit isn't in pieces? But then why didn't we see them when we entered Ghost Town? Wouldn't they still, I don't know, hang out? Maybe this has to do with that purple magic we were seeing. Maybe the guards just went on patrol. Well, I, I, I'm more concerned about where Drixlin is because he had our only tangible lead. Do you think maybe they went back to that uh, lab that we took all those notes from? Uh, and Dr. What was their name again? Dr. Desmond's lab? Or was this different? No, the, the lab where Oishi saw the purple magic from recently. Oh, yeah. And I have a vial of this, and I pull out uh, from my inventory. I have a thing of corpse flower nectar. Corpse fever vial. Ooh, that's right. Oh, that. And they that also right. could have just not wanted to stay in, I don't know, the spooky abandoned town with no one else, with the only people who would protect them leaving. That's just me. That does make a lot of sense. Oh. But still doesn't explain why they didn't say anything. Or leave the notes. Rishi just shrugs. How much time has passed since we've been like talking and investigating and like you know, you, you fed now. the you fed the cat, you kind of you know, slightly meandered over here probably about half an hour. I'd say that since it was sort of late afternoon when you all sort of like last asked what time it was, it's you're just starting to just see the first trickles of the sunset starting to to come over the ocean. Well, whatever we're trying to do, we better finish it before it gets dark. I don't think it's a good idea for us to be wandering around unsure of what to do when we don't know what could yeah, we should come probably at night. Barricade as well. That's oh, what I was saying. Well, Let's barricade the library. That's probably a good secure place. <laughs> We should grab Fancy then, because Fancy yeah. needs to be fed. You just fed her. Yeah, but she said I think twice Fancy a day. is safe. I hope. Look, we're getting a little off track here. <laughs> we should probably look to see if there's any trace of Drixlin around the town before we um, shack up in the night for the night and figure out where we should go next. But uh, we should totally you know, split up. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a very good idea. 
you'd cover more ground. And someone could get snatched. It, it, we don't know if they, oh. I'm just worried. I'm just worried, this is scary. Okay, okay. How about this? Let's just, is it, Palak doesn't know what to do, but he wants to do something. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the queen's arms and start fortifying it as best I can. You, well, you're we'll all already all... in the queen's arms. Okay, then I will begin doing that. You guys need to figure out where you need to go because I imagine this is where, well, I hope the militia people come back here. Uh, so, okay, so the most obvious ways that you can see to sort of fortify the queen's arms is to shutter all of those wooden shutters on uh, the outside that kind of, you know, come down. Um, as you are rushing around doing all of this, uh, you do walk by Drixellen's room, which is the room that Drixellen was staying in. Uh, you uh, see that it's cracked open a little bit. I kick it open. You kick it open and you see that all of their stuff is still, the, like the couple of things that they had left in that room are still there. There's like a scarf hanging on the bedpost and a bag. Is it a nice scarf? It's sort of a seafoam green and gray. Uh, that goes perfectly with my scales. I whip it around my head. All right, you have now stolen wild scarf. Oh, what paper. else is in this room? This is great. This was this just, a just a regular, uh, uh, this is just a regular, um, in room with, uh, just like a little sort of gas lantern in the, the side, uh, the side table. But the, and also the scarf is very long on you as, uh, Drixellen was a, a merfolk, uh, rather tall. It's perfect. Now I okay. now I feel like I need I need a, a drawing of tiny cobra. Yeah, giant just star. like wrapped like all over and like just sitting on his shoulders like some sort of like. Have you ever seen the Etsy night helms that are made out of like yarn? It's like that. Cute. And he has a little like. <laughs> So just, you know, from deductive reasoning, you would think that probably Drixellen has not booked it. Yeah, I'll give it back. I'll give it back. Uh, so you are, you're, you're, you're going around and you're shuttering things and taking scarves. What's everyone else doing? Or she pops into the kitchen and starts making that pie recipe and evaluating. It calls for three different kinds of berries, uh, which of which uh, you have not heard of two of them. I will I will send you some some of this stuff over uh, the thing. But you do see that a couple of the ingredients are in fact in this well stocked uh, kitchen that you have found yourself in, and you don't have a hard time. Working on this pie. Um, I think Sloane is gonna cast like a cantrip, like maybe like uh, another like minor illusion to make like a little like mini atlas or flower or something, just to test to see if her magic has gone back to normal again. It's completely normal. Ugh. I'm okay. going to purify food and drink to the ingredients. Uh, while Oishi's finishing the pie, just to make sure we don't get sick. Very Are smart. We, I will let Oishi decide if Oishi lets lets you do that to there. there he begrudgingly there. does. Um, Son will ask the group: Are Are we for sure staying here again tonight? Barricading ourselves in. Well, I Better mean, idea. the lighthouse is a lost cause until the we get we get more people here. And the door fixed. 
and the door fixed because it was hanging on just by a lynch, but we made sure was, of that, didn't we, Sloan? It was barely there to begin with. It was not a functioning door, first of okay. all. Okay. Uh, well, okay. We also have to show that we can like stand up for prosperity and make it, you know, a town called Prosperity should be prosperous and safe at night. Okay. How Unless it's a ghost town. Well, th- that's a good point. How big is the tavern itself? Like about how many? The the first floor of the tavern is a big, wide sort of great hall with the, Party hall. With the big uh, stone fireplace on one end and the stairs that go up to the second floor that have all of the inn rooms in it. Uh, so it would fit a good 50, 60 people milling about. Are there multiple doors? There are multiple doors. Door? There's the big set of double doors that, that you came in. Um, I will pull up and I will explain this roll 20 a little bit. So where it says the Queen's Arms and there's that sort of like little sign. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the front door. There's a little porchy thing and then the doors that go into it. And then on the other side, there's another little tiny door. That's the door that looks out into where the fire pit area is, has the tiny pond, and across the way is that lab. Okay, Sloan is kind of like looking around the interior, trying to decide. She, she's like, I can, I can make it so an alarm goes off if anybody comes in, but there are too many. I don't know if if someone sneaks in from the back or someone sneaks in through a different door. This place might be too big. Should Whatever it is, we watch. should. Yeah. I think there's like a pathway that like leads to the end right. Or I guess what Sloan will do is she'll ritual cast alarm and we'll put it in front of like the big. Or. Yeah, she'll put it in front of the main door. The big main right. double door. Okay. Yeah. And it's. Yeah, choose a door, window, or area within range, and then it will last eight hours. So she'll probably actually do it right before we go to sleep. So yeah. she's just like making note of like what the space looks like. All right, cool, cool. I'm also going to make sure that uh, Palak focuses enough on his javelin to, oh no, I have a pike, uh, on one of those uh, to turn it into his dragoon weapon. Okay, where are you doing this? On the roof, because the dragoon needs to be familiar with heights and Palak is not okay with heights. So he just goes on the roof and he just like, okay, collapses and just holds it. Tries you, you, to go channel. On, you go up onto the roof. Uh, it takes a little bit of effort because there's no immediate, uh, really obvious way to get up there, but you do find uh, in one of the rooms a ladder on the outside of one of the windows that you do find a way to get up there. Uh, I do feel like since you did mention that you're afraid of heights that I would like to get an athletic uh, acrobatics check. I was praying that you would make me do that because I have great acrobatics. You've also got, got 17. two rerolls. Okay, yeah, you don't need it. Yeah, you uh, totally fine. You've seen enough scary stuff today that the heights maybe are not bothering you as much it's been a rough time this this has not been the the magical adventure he was hoping for (laughs) uh but you you're up getting this sort of bird's eye view of prosperity a little bit um and you start to mess with your javelin and commuting and etc uh, do you do any like meditation or just uh, stabbing at stuff with it? I think he just does a like a strong, firm pose with it, like like really doing Thundercats with it, and just mm-hmm. like yeah, um, and just trying to remember all the uh, the the pieces of home of the Lore Eater's library and the depths of its uh, informative vaults and the ever-present scent of cobalt scales and dragon membrane of their wings as they flap. Okay. 
Uh, so, as I said before, the sun is just, just starting to descend, so you're getting the little flickers of sort of darkness start to come up. And as you are thinking about this and, and working with your javelin, you hear, or you think you hear, uh, just sort of a whisper in your left ear. It's not, not a word or anything, it's just a, a sound, very sharply. Oh, he whispers. Who's there? <laughs> and you don't see anything. You just hear, and only in one ear, just, just in your left ear. Strike harder. You've already seen the clues. And it just pops out. Oh no. Oh no, I've been given expectations. But before you uh, can uh, think about that at all, you do see some movement. <gasps> and uh, you can see coming out of the library is Drixelin. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I scrambled to get back to his room and replace the scarf. <laughs> Give me that acrobatics check. <laughs> 15. Yeah, okay, you're, you're fine. Okay. But I do do that scream, though. <laughs> All right, so you're scrambling to get down, and the uh, the room that had the ladder in it to go to the roof was not the same room that had the scarf in it, so I just want you to roll a d20 and tell me what you get. Ooh, okay. Let's, let's make it interesting and have it be a real d20. It's not a digital one. So will I. Pretty. Okay, here I go. Ooh, 15. Yeah, you beat me. Uh, you get back to Drixlin's room and put the scarf back on the bed and rush downstairs as they are walking in the front door. <laughs> and the, <laughs> and Sorry. the rest of you see Drixlin. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, oh wait, you have not cat. Okay, never mind. Right. The rest of you see Drixlin walk in the front door. Hello. Oh, hello. So you were in the library, huh? Uh, Drixlin has a arm full of books. Oh, geez. Excellent deductive uh, reasoning there. Yes. Oh, can I read some of those? Can you? Sure. Of course. What are you researching? Uh, well, these are uh, just everything I thought looked useful. Uh, How did your excursion go? And and Drixlin absolutely, without even like needing an insight check, looks a little uncomfortable. Uh, but you're not really sure why. Uh, it went pretty bad. This place is pretty dangerous, and we need to wait until we can find replacements for the lighthouse because that's that's a that's bad. It's unattended right now, and it's really messy. Uh, Drixlin looks around at the rest of you and just uh, quizzically uh, replacements? Yeah, the people there are dead. Oh. There are monsters. Oh. And purple magic. Oh. I start just looking through the book titles and just like throwing the ones that don't concern monsters or purple magic <laughs> on the floor. Uh, well, there is a book on codes. Uh, there is a book on cartography. There's a book on astrology, not astrology, astronomy. 
Yes, what's your sign? Um, what is my, I was so excited, gosh darn. Um, Palak was about to whip up uh, some astrological knowledge on you, but no, I guess not. Um, yeah, it's real bad. There are a lot of bad monsters and we're in a pickle. There were two bad monsters. Um, let's try not to descend into hyperbole. Hyperbole? They eat people. Uh, Drixlin's getting a little overwhelmed with this, I suspect, and is going to go pick up the books that you have unceremoniously tossed. And Oh god, the, she's the Fancy's here. And Fancy has wandered in. It's canon. Uh... I told you, Fancy said she needed to be fed twice a day. She knows that pie is being baked. Actually, yeah, Fancy just walks in because the door was left open just a little bit after Drixlin walked in and is making uh, her way to the kitchen, clearly but... following her nose. So, Drixlin. Dino, uh, sorry to cut you off. Uh, Dino, oh, no. you see a cat come in to your kitchen. <sighs> Can I help you? Oh, uh, actually, I'm a wood gnome, so she can understand me. I can't understand her, though. Aww. Uh, okay, what did you ask it, then? Can I help you? Uh, the the cat kind of makes, like, a, a, a short meow and, and walks up uh, and kind of, like, is looking up at what you're doing. Go to the, the main room. I'm, I'm busy here and I don't want to get cat hair in my pie. Meow. Please. Sits its butt down on the floor. Oh, you cat. She like pauses for a moment, picks her up by the scruff and walks into the common room, drops the cat and then immediately goes back into the kitchen. It's actively hissing at you. And uh, Durok, since, since you uh, still have the spell technically up, you just hear, What are you doing? Put me down! This is rude! Hardly rude! You're making pie and I want some pie! Uh, it needs to be cooked first. What? No, it doesn't. Okay. I go back in and I ask Oishi for a little bit of the Fido. Just a small little pinch. Like, whatever you're trimming. Oishi kind of just... She doesn't do anything aggressive, she's just stink eye. So that's a maybe? She kind of just nods and then pretends that you're not otherwise there. All right. I take whatever scraps that are there. I take a small little bit and I stick it in front of the flame to maybe cook it a little bit. And I go back in and I hand it to Fancy because I spoil cats. <laughs> Fancy takes a bite uh, looks at you like she was about to say something, and then then just keeps eating. Because I was absolutely going to have you sass, about, or sass you about it not being cooked. But you did it anyway. You're smart. Well, no, you don't feed cats raw dough. <laughs> uh, so thus, thus continuing the grand uh, rivalry of Oishi and Sirakt in the kitchen... Uh, does anybody else have anything else that they had wanted to do? Battering the hatches, etc. Uh, Rorick was going to try to um, go to the uh, surveyor's office and see if he can um, borrow a few maps of the local area. Alright. Uh, surveyor's um, so you do, uh, you walk around the town with the light that is still, uh, that's still around, 
and you do see that sort of attached it looks like it it shares a wall but it's unclear whether or not it uh, is part of the Academy of Cartography uh, big building or if it's it's unclear but it is locked um, is it a uh, heavy duty lock or is it something that uh, I think I can you could break down absolutely force it okay I will it's more just that, a formality though. at this point of how much you're going to break and enter into all these people's homes. Sure. You'll uh, force it. Yeah. Uh, so you, you can go in and you'll get a, a map of prosperity as it is currently uh, written. You uh, do find, and I, these are actually things that I do have and that I can, I can send you the picture of, uh, a sort of just general uh, sketch of the uh, southern region of the peninsula that has the lighthouse and prosperity and Archaea and the the kind of road that meets the two um, and there's a lot of sort of nebulous uh, space above that is unexplored and uh, yeah there's, huh. there's no other uh, widely available maps in this particular building you do see oh. that uh the there i should have said this already uh you do see that there actually is a door that uh does go between the academy and this particular office all right well we've already broken down one door he'll broke break down the other door and check it out i'm gonna need a strength check on this one if you're just pound it, pounding your way in that was a uh, 20. Oh. All right. You uh, have no problem breaking your way through this door. Uh, the lock that you can see once you've opened the door uh, has been very, very well bent. Uh, however, once you do break this door, uh, you hear a uh, very loud sound of high-pitched sort of warning and it just doesn't go away and it's very loud and it hurts your ears oh damn it um can i peek around in the room or is it too um unbearable in that? you can peek your way in it's very loud and you just see a sort of darkened hallway and there's a number of other sort of doors with uh, frosted glass uh, you know, and yeah, that's like the, yeah, the top half is it. like frosted glass. Like, yeah, sure. Um, I guess it's not really worth it. And uh, he'll just close the door behind him and head on back to the inn. You close the door. The alarm does not stop, but it does sort of stifle it a little bit. And you're no longer in pain. Uh, and you can leave. As you leave, you, yeah. you still hear a slight a slight bit of the how the alarm is still ringing. It doesn't seem to stop. Yeah, well. All right. Uh, so you make your way back to the Queen's Arms uh, with the knowledge that uh, Cassette Isano and her militia crew will not be back today. Trix Allen is there, Nelly is there, Francois is not there, and I believe that is the entire accounting of Caldwell. Caldwell's there, sitting in the corner. Mm. He holding up. He's just bored looking. <coughs> Our, uh... I will announce that I will be back on the roof looking for any signs of danger. Fabulous. So, uh, Drixelin, did you, uh, how, how are you doing on piecing together those notes? Well, uh, the, the good, the good scientist, uh, Dr. Uh, Whatever his his field was, still trying to determine that. Uh, 
was clearly working on something that went amiss. Oh, I, there's just, you know, there's there's this star chart, so that's why I got this uh, astro astrology book. Um, and there's just a lot of fidgeting going on with their body language. You holding out on us? What, why would you say that? Here. Looking awfully nervous there. Are you still wearing the scarf, the Drixlin? I went to get it uh, as I went back to the roof. Well, I just, you know, was left alone in this town all day with uh, weird things going on. And, and then you just said that people were murdered. It's just... And I, I was only expecting to be here for it's just been it's just been a lot. Fair enough. Well, you seem to be very low on leads at the moment, so I'm hoping that you have something that we might be able to act on. Well, uh I will let you know. You're all looking at me very intently. Who's this guy? Points at Caldwell. It was one of our uh, prisoners who escaped, but then got dumped back on her lap. A long because, story. Because he ditched his sister's husband and his sister's mad at him. So left Caldwell with us. And we got caught up in it somehow, yeah. All right, then. I'm going to go read some books. Thanks for your help. Uh, not, not a thing. And, uh, Oishi, do you finish your pie? I, I hope so. I don't, I don't, how long does the recipe take? So. Who here knows how to bake in real life and can tell me how long a pie takes? I do. Uh, from start to finish. Yeah. Oh, you can go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so um, the dough usually has to sit for a bit. So I don't know if that was an issue. And then after you like chill the dough, you have to actually bake the pie. So it probably like hours? two to three hours. Yeah. Okay. So by the time uh, the pie has been uh, chilled and then baked, I know nothing about baking. Is it a savory uh, or a sweet pie? It is a sweet pie. Yeah. Two to three hours. Um, it's savory. Does it have a paw print on it because of Fancy? Fancy was on the floor. Fancy didn't, uh, okay. didn't jump up. Good. She did. She was going to get catapulted. Uh, <laughs> oh! Oh, perfect. All right. No mercy. All right. Cats are not spared. We got the got the puns this evening. <laughs> um, now I'm happy, and I'm gonna continue with my little wrap up. Um, by the time the pie has been finished baking, uh, all of you sit around to enjoy it. All of you that don't, you know, simply rely on good berries. And uh, the cat is taking a nice nap in front of the fire. If anybody has started that up again, um, are you staying on the roof? Okay. Yeah. You stay on the roof. The sun sets. And I offer Fancy a good berry. Fancy ponders it. The spell has worn uh off by now. Unless you were going to yeah. recast. Uh, I could ritual cast it, so spend oh, okay. 10 yeah. minutes casting it, and then... Fancy will... You know, as as a druid, I would expect you to understand and know what carnivores actually eat. True, but cats are more like 
carny omnivores. Carny omnivores. <laughs> I mean, domesticated cats, because they seem to like having dairy products a lot. Yeah, I had a bag. Uh, but, I had a, a bag. I had a cat uh, steal a tomato out of a salad I was eating once. So Cats also really are freaking, they freak out about bread, too. Nah. Like, if you look up a video of a cat and bread, like, they, are, they will kill their owner for it. Oh, yeah, especially a croissant. <laughs> I mean... Um, I mean, tomatoes are toxic too. Uh, yeah, cats, they are. So, <laughs> it wasn't my oh, cat. Yes. <laughs> cats I don't know like getting into things they're not supposed to be into. I my know. cat likes garlic, which will also cherry. kill them. The tomato. It's like a little cherry tomato. Anyway, um, I'm gonna text my friend like immediately right after this uh, stream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, the gist of everything is is that you all enjoy this pie. Uh, Oishi, Set me. you think it's you think it's okay. You you need to get a little bit of a more of an understanding of uh, the more local sort of flora and fauna to be able to figure out where all the flavor uh, mingling should really go in this three berry local berry pie. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's fine. Uh, the cat uh, nibbles about half of the good berry and kind of it's not its favorite, but it seems to like you. And Does it make the the vomit sound where they're like, <laughs> oh, where they like announce that they will up chuck? <laughs> no, no, no. It's it 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 it, okay. it doesn't go that far. Um, and you don't see anything. Are you staying out there all night? <sighs> no, I'll stay until midnight. Okay, you stay until midnight, and you you don't see anything. Uh, and do the rest of you all sort of go to bed or take shifts or anything like that? I'll say uh, right... Oh, you can go ahead. Yeah, Brorook is going to um, take the first watch. Okay. I think I have the first watch, technically. That's... Yeah, I mean... Brorook doesn't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Well, then. I was going to say Sloan planned on casting alarm on the front door and then having Atlas sit and look at the back door or at okay. the other areas just in case. All of that goes off without a hitch. Uh, Oishi, where do you sleep? Uh, well, was there a basement? I recall. Uh, there wasn't a basement per se. There was a, a small sort of side door that led into a just like slightly lower down into the ground storagey kind of room that was lined with stones and it has like tubers and potatoes and that sort of thing like... Yeah, so there, Oishi, but... Oishi goes to chill in that room and then reaches into her bag of holding and takes out the little mini fridge she had pocketed and then proceeds to smash it into a bunch of pieces and begins to reassemble it into what looks like a giant arm-length glove. All right, all right, all right. Um, are you working on this all night, you think, probably? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, probably. Okay. So, uh, you don't know what time it is, but you have been working on this all night, and you're starting to, as excited as you are to work on this, your eyes are starting to kind of flitter in and out, and you actually are slightly surprised when a, the, the door to this, uh, the storage cellar opens, and you see a, a dwarven woman... Uh, walk in. She's wearing an apron. Uh, she is uh, sort of very strong looking. Um, stern. Just walks into this room. What are you doing? Who you the have hell are made, you? You have made a huge mess of my cellar. Where the hell is did that, you come from? Is that? Do you know how expensive that was? Do you know where the hell you came from? Where the hell I came from? I live here. This is my tavern. Or she like immediately pulls her pistol. Oh. Um, <laughs> who are you? She, where am I? She what whips, happened? She whips out a rolling pin from her apron. Don't you sass me in my own kitchen. 
She just like wait. She just shouts out, "Browick!" Do I hear him? Her? Them? Uh, if you're, where are you taking your watch? Uh, I'd be watching it from like the main room, just outside. Then of the you, kitchen. then you do hear, yes. Uh, Browick is gonna get up and peer inside the kitchen. Do I see the woman there? You see, you walk into the kitchen and you see just for a moment a flash of a woman who wheels on you. It has has a roll has a rolling pin in her hand. Looks at you. And then you both see her disappear. So you saw that one, right? Uh, Angry dwarf lady, rolling pin. Yes. Oh, thank God. And that's what we're going to leave our story for today. Because I'm that guy. Oh, ho, ho. But, uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, before we go around and say our goodbyes individually from each player, uh, I just want to thank everyone uh, that followed and uh, through bits at the chat, uh, Crit Witch, thank you so much for throwing those two rerolls at Palak. I will do my best to make sure that he has to use them very soon. I uh, just want to remind you all about the Discord, the Patreon, and the merch shop. And uh, let's see, why don't you also, if you have time, join us on Friday for Storm of Four. It's a D&D story DM'd by the awesome Throck, who uh, is one of the people that runs this channel. And I'm going to go around and let my players pitch their stuff and say goodnight. And I did I did that order, and then I'll do that order. So we'll go back to Four. All right. Hello. My name is Four. And I... I don't do a whole lot as of yet. My new year has mostly been just me being a horse groom um, and writing in my spare time. I'm working on a little novel and I'm working on a new tabletop role-playing game called Four Minutes. It will be a sort of Twilight Zone-esque, uh, initially a one-shot oriented system using only D4s and I'm having a blast writing it and designing all sorts of all sorts of fun little storytelling mechanics. Um, it'll be released fairly soon, I think. I keep saying that, but then Monster Hunter World rears its beautiful face into my uh, into my collective consciousness. So just follow me on Twitter at On the Forefronts for updates about that. And you can also check out my free uh, Blades in the Dark hack for Animorphs, which is still amazing. I love you. Well, thank you for bringing Palak to our lives. Man, Palak is just, he, <laughs> he believes he's here for a reason. He has to. Uh, well, we'll see how that goes. How about you, Dino? Uh, yeah, I'm Dino still. Um, don't really do much because I don't really have an online presence. So, yeah. And Dino was played by a map this evening, but Dino is lovely. And Dino is downplaying their stuff. Down, D Dino is going to be, uh, as of next week, showcasing this really cool sort of add-on supplementy thing. You'll see that in action. It's real neat. They have pitch you for you. All right. Ooh. So we'll go down to <laughs> Miriam. Uh, hi, so I played Dareth. You can find me online at media underscore junkie, well, on Twitter anyway. Uh, I, uh, oh, words. I am the GM of the Mosafers podcast, uh, which is set in Serzanine, my uh, South Asian campaign setting, which is very much a work in progress. And I f keep forgetting to plug it, but I am also a player on uh, Powered by the Play. Uh, powered by the players which is a pbta podcast on the role to play network and uh we are playing masks and i am playing a character um called amir ali um 
and my mask name is Mixed Direction because I am uh, a gender fluid, uh, sort of Loki esque type of a uh, masks character. Okay. And that's me. What, what was the name of that again? Now I'm sold. Uh, powered by the players. So I think it's uh, it's the name of the show on Roll to Play Network. Okay. I want to see that. Uh, I think our right now episode one is out, oh. and we should be releasing more episodes soon. Um, cool. All yeah. right, uh, and you know my fellow Bostonian. Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name's Anino. You can find me on Twitter at Anino Gaming. Um, you can also find my schedule of uh, TTRPG streams on my website, which is aninogaming.com. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot uh, in the works right now, but uh, you can catch me in just uh, less than two weeks away at uh, PAX East, where I will be uh, volunteering at the I Need Diverse Games table. And um, in the meantime, I will be procrastinating preparation. That sounds... Sounds about right. I'll see you there. Yeah. Um, uh, Sus. Hey, um, I'm Sus. Um, I'm not super active either. I just have Twitter. Um, at Santa underscore K. Um, I played Sloan tonight. Uh, Blizzard, and I'm also in the Welcome to the Party Discord, which I just want to plug because you should join. It's a fun place to be. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see. I'm Ren. I go by Atomic Firebird. I have a fledgling uh, Twitch channel called Make Underscore Believe Underscore. It is about LARPing. So if that's sort of your thing or you're interested in it, I do an interview show every week with a LARPer uh, ranging from veteran LARPers to beginner LARPers just to answer a bunch of questions and get more information out. Because everyone on my TTRPG side of things is constantly asking me how you get into it. So now I'm trying to figure out how to show you all. Uh, yeah. Uh, I am on... I almost just said I'm on Welcome to the Party on Wednesdays. You know. I am in a Star Wars actual play podcast that gets released every Thursday. Uh, called Heroes of the Hydean Way. And starting March 3rd, I am going to be on Nerdsmith on Tuesday nights for Shenanigans, the reboot, season two, Spelljammer. I'm excited. And uh, I was looking at the list of who to raid, and there's a lot of good choices, but I think um, if it's cool, I kind of want to raid somebody who doesn't have that many people watching them right now, who is a really cool... A uh, TTRPG player I know named PB Plays Inside. So I'm not sure what she's doing over there, but I'm gonna hit go on that because she's cool. And yeah, I have the control. So thank you all very much. And good night. Uh, it's forward slash, I think. Oh, shoot. Yeah, so I just did the whole thing. There again. it is. I'm real good at this, everyone. Boom. There we go. Hey, you're improving every week. So <laughs> I hope so. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta go to bed. I'm gonna have a big bowl of ice cream before I do, though. Ugh. Raid, good night. Alright. I, I will see you next week. Okay, we have rated. We're done. Alright. Thank you all. Thank you all, thank you all. I'm also going to crash and go to bed. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have a fun night, everybody.